Hello and welcome to my studio. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this windswept scene. We've got grey rain clouds um, racing across the windswept sky and hillsides with trees in the distance and some a little bit closer trying to get some depth and distance keeping it very loose and fresh uh, but trying to make sure that the atmosphere is captured more than anything. Today I've worked from a photograph from the royalty free site Pixabay for inspiration. I'm not trying to paint the scene exactly, I'm just using this as a guide for my painting and trying to interpret it in my own way as a loose watercolour painting. I shall leave a link to the reference photograph in the description below. I started off as always by sketching out the scene, simplifying it down to its basic shapes. So just looking at the basic shape of the hills and if there are any curves or undulations in the hills and just making a quick note of those marks with my pencil, putting in the trees, uh, just generally the lay of the land, maybe scribbling in a little bit of darker tone with the pencil just to keep me on track as I paint the scene. I'm using Saunders Waterford rough texture paper today and I've turned it over to use the back because I prefer the back of the rough. I think it's got a nicer surface. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 20 to 30 degrees. Today, for my first layer, I'm only going to paint the sky. I'm painting it wet in wet, so using a large wash brush, any wash brush will do, but this is a Princeton Aqua Elite one and a half inch mottler brush. I'm going to just wet the sky area all over, cutting around the hills, so only the sky in this first pass. Making sure there's an even amount of water on my page and making sure it just soaks in a little bit so it's not swimming with water but by the same token ensuring that it hasn't started to dry out. Then introducing a few patches of raw sienna to start with just a nice light value and this will add a bit of warmth when I add my Payne's grey. Introducing Payne's Grey um, to the top left corner keeps it nice and dark and then as the paint runs out on my brush or as I dip into a little bit more water I can introduce slightly paler values so I'm working from dark value through to mid value of Payne's Grey and then finally finishing off with lighter value uh, close to the hills, cutting around the hills. And I'm painting around my raw sienna patches and some patches of unpainted paper as well. And this will give me some variety for my clouds. I'm not trying to copy the reference photograph exactly. All I'm looking for is to get a nice cloudy sort of windswept atmosphere to my sky so that it has the sort of promise of rain clouds and a storm on the way. And then as soon as I'm happy with my sky, I shall leave it alone and just allow it to naturally dry so everything softens back and diffuses. And then once it's dry, then I can begin work on my landscape. So here's the dry painting and I'm quite pleased with this sky. I think it's got some movement, some life, some energy. It's nice and fresh. So now I'm going to paint in my distant hills to start with. Using my size 14 round brush, I'm going to paint them with mixtures, varying mixtures of raw sienna, raw umber, and a little bit of Payne's gray introduced for shadow. And then as I come forward across the middle ground and the foreground, I'll introduce a little bit of sap green for some extra freshness.
So now that I've painted my distance, my middle ground, I'm coming forward with that slightly brighter colour with a bit of sap green in it for the foreground. But then I shall return to these kind of ochre tones of the raw sienna and raw umber um, across for most of the foreground. Once I have the whole of the landscape roughed in, then I can start to come in with some darker greens to put in my tree lines. And I shall mix my darker greens from sap green, perylene green and some Payne's grey. So now that I've started off this really lovely dark tree line in the middle ground, I'm going back to the background hill right in the far distance on the left, which is covered in the same dark trees. So I shall quickly drop that into the composition and then go back and work a bit more on my mid ground trees, adding some more deeper tonal values and a little bit more shape. And I've now added a bit more sap green and a bit more raw sienna to that dark tree colour. And I'm just putting in a few brush strokes to start with across the foreground. I'll soften it back a little and then just let it dry. And then once it's dry, I can put in a little bit of something and nothing loose suggested detail in the foreground to lead the eye into the painting.
I'm just using my palette knife to scrape a little bit of texture and suggested detail into the foreground, something and nothing. And then just using a small brush and putting in a few little trees and bushes on the distant hillside, just following the shape of the path. making sure that they're kind of fairly flat across the base so that they look like they're sitting in on the landscape, on the path, if you see what I mean. And that just gives that illusion of a bit of depth and distance. I'm going to try not to overdo it. There's more detail in the photograph, but I'm trying to keep mine to a minimum, just so that this loose watercolour painting is um, sort of maintained a sense of freshness. And I think the painting is finished now, so I'm going to remove the tape. This removes all that scruffy brush work around the edges where I've taken my brush strokes off the tape and gives us an idea of what it would look like if it was a finished painting, if it was uh, in, a, in a matte or a mount or, f or framed. And we can see it with fresh eyes and see if there's anything else we need doing to it. And I'm quite happy with this. Um, it's a good starting point for this kind of scene. Um, I feel that I've got the depth and distance, the windswept atmosphere and kept the freshness in the painting, which is what I was setting out to try and achieve at the beginning of this exercise. So I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments. I always enjoy reading them. And I hope you'll give something like this a go. And many thanks again for watching and many thanks for your support. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone who supports us on Patreon. We really do appreciate each and every one of you. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.